Hello, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please uh, hit that notification down there and um, get yourself subscribed. And if you want to hit the notification bell, then you'll get notified of when I bring out new videos. So what we got today, this one has come as a bit of a surprise. I knew that Airfix were going to relaunch this kit this year. This is the 148th Supermarine Walrus and it's a beautiful kit. I should have bought it first time round. But I'm glad I got it this time. And it was on my back order list at Hannant's. Uh, due for June and all of a sudden I got an email from Hannant's a back an item on your back order list is available and here it is so um this is I've really been looking forward to getting this uh, it's a plane I absolutely love I love looking at the random one down at Yeovilton Museum and um it's a really really nice plane and in 48 scale it's a perfect size I should have bought the HPH one when it's available but it's no longer available in 30 second scale I would love to get one if any of you got one that you want to sell but um yeah, this will be this will have to do for now so um i haven't looked in the box or anything it's all still sealed up with tape so this will be my first look so without further ado let's get to that camera there that one and have a look down on there and see what's in here okay so today is uh what is it today tuesday the 9th of april 2024 and it's blowing a bloody gale outside so here we have this is the kit it is part number a09183 148 Supermarine Walrus Mark 1. Um, as you can see, beautiful box art. We've got a typhoon gone, or a tempest, is it? Gone down there, and you can see the pilot there with his arm up in the air. And uh, the walrus is going to come and rescue him. Well, the guy in the walrus is going to come and rescue him. So, um, beautiful, beautiful aircraft. Single engine, pusher prop, biplane, rigging. Yay! Lovely, isn't it? Really, really nice. So, um, here we have a look around the box. We have a CAD model. And you can see we've got lots and lots of interior in there. And you can see the best shot of Walrus is from the rear quarter looking lovely. And there you go. Another beautiful view there looking lovely. All the uh, bits and pieces, health and safety in the um, different languages there on the side of the box. And here you can see we've got that lovely symbol there, which means it's got cartograph decals, which will be absolutely stunning. Airfix cartograph decals are amazing. Uh, recommended for 8 plus. Um, so if you're under eight, you can't build this. OK, um, and it's uh, made in India. Contents may vary from those illustrated. So it may well be a Ford GT40 in the box. Who knows? Um, and here we have some words you can pause and read should you want to. We've got a 238 millimeter length, a 292 millimeter wingspan and 157 pieces. So not a massive part count. So it should be a fairly quick build. If we ever bloody get round to it, I want to do the Anson first. Um, so we've got Supermarine Walrus Mark 1, the 276 Squadron in um, Devon, 1944. We've got another Walrus Mark 1, 700 Naval Squadron, or 700 Naval Squadron, HMS Sheffield, 1941. So that was ship-based. And then we've got this one here, um, number 5, CF Royal Australian Air Force, Australia and New Guinea, early 1943 so a lot of you Aussie guys would be mad for that one so turning over the box we've got this sticker here which is something we have to keep should we need any spare parts I think that's the one anyway was it the one that's on the bags so opening in the box here lid coming up very very nice glossy box which is awful for uh, filming but it's very very nice for quality so we have here um, one bag of sprues which is Unfortunate for the model builder, but great for the environment. And then we've got the clear sprues in there, which are separately bagged. And straight away we can see this is the, the later dark plastic. And then we've got the instruction manual in here. And within here will be decals, I should imagine, and colour callouts. There we go. So we've got a beautiful um, decal sheet there. There's going to be no issues with them whatsoever. They're cartograph. I'm not putting the light on yet, guys, because we're looking at the instructions. We'll get the light on when we look at sprues. But uh, yeah, really, really beautiful. We've got walkways there and um, very, very nice an instrument panel. I don't think there's really much point in going aftermarket on this on the interior and stuff because you're not really going to be able to see a lot of it. But uh, using that decal and highlighting with gloss varnish where the gauges are, I think will be fine. So this is going to open out, or is it two separate sheets? It's two separate sheets. So we have here version A, which is our one down in Devon, which is very pretty indeed. And then here we have version B, which was on HMS Sheffield with the straight line rather than the squiggly line you've got there. And we've got different colours as well. We've got a grey underside rather than sky. I think the sky probably looks better. It's more sort of characteristic of old English, isn't it? Um, and then we've got here, we've got version C. 
And now we've got the blue. This is the Australian version. Um, and then here we have, for experienced modelers who may wish to add them to their model, the positions of the many bracing wires and control cables are indicated below. So thank you very much for that, Airfix. Very good of you. And uh, I can assure you that will really make this model pop. So you can use easy line, you can use fishing line, you can make little hooks, you can just drill holes. There's a million different ways you can do it. Actually be a good kit to practice on rather than mess up a nice wing that wings, isn't it? Um, because you can replace this for about 40 quid. A wing that wings is about 300, isn't it? So we have the typical um, now Airfix red, black and white instruction manual. It's white paper with black and red ink printed on it. And these instructions, I really do like them. Airfix have come on leaps and bounds. Their quality, their tooling is just awesome. Um, I don't know when this tool was, kit was first tooled. I should have had a look. Um, so here we go. So going into the build, we're starting with the bottom of the hull. Um, and adding this uh, planking in. So you can see we've got these foot plates here. I'm not sure if these are going to be wood painted or still wood coloured. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it. But anyway, unless you have a door open or something, I guess. But uh, yeah, we're adding that floor to the bottom of the hull. Then we're going to come along here and add these stepped parts into the what looks like a main sort of cross member or a main um, former in between the wings by the look of it. And then we've got this wooden area here which is obviously seating or standing on or whatever. And we've got all this planking going in the bottom here. So we've got all this, this wooden decking, which I'm assuming would have been painted um, or at least varnished or whatever. Um, it's telling us here 78. I believe 78 is, is a tan color, isn't it? And 33 is matte black and then 56 is aluminium. So, um, and this is, oh, this is interior green, sorry. 78 is interior green, isn't it? So there we are. Um, and then coming over the page here, we're going to build up, this looks like part of the seat, is it? Yes, yes it is. It's the seat mounting frame. So it's all looking very, very technical with uh, all these aluminium fabrications and stuff. Seat going in, control column. We've got no harnesses, but it would be easy to make some out of tape or something or some foil. Um, or indeed buy the Edward ones, you know, because you seat belts will be able to see through the windows. They are quite large, but uh, I don't really see the point in going to all the extra fuss. Um, and then the seat's going in there. Single pilot seat, and then we've got here, I'm guessing that's a navigator, and then here we're going to have a wireless operator or vice versa. And then here we've got another former going in, they're showing you how that's going to fit, it should be right angles to the seat. Um, and then we've got this box here going in the side. We've got a ring going in the top, I'm assuming that's a gun ring. Um, and what they're showing you here is how not to do it and how to do it, how it should fit and how it shouldn't fit. So uh, make sure you get that right. Uh, that'll all become clear when you actually go to build the model. Here we've got, looks like a seating pad or a kneeling pad. We've got a rail there, that's probably a winding antenna. Uh, we've got a board on the side there, possibly a fuse panel or something, I don't know. Windows going in from the inside, unfortunately. It'd be nice if they went in from the outside, then you can add them after. But uh, whatever, we've got another reel there. And then here we've got a rolled up, that could be dinghies or something, I'm not sure. But again, it's telling you to paint the interior green, so I'd have thought they'd be a different colour. This would be aluminium, and it's telling us if we're having the wings out, then we've got to drill some two millimeter holes. Probably something I missed at the beginning of the instructions. No, they haven't done it. Normally, Airfix will um, have at the beginning, you know, the, op the different options you've got. I'm sure you can build this with folded wings. So this is with wings out. This is with wings out. So you're going to drill these holes for the main spars to go in if you're having the wings out. And then we're going to bring the fuselage halves together. Look at all that lovely detail in there. It's beautiful. And then we're going to add the roof. So we're adding the floor to the fuselage half, adding the fuselage half, then adding the roof. Um, and then we've got all this nose piece going on here with a, what's that, a cable reel or something? Or is that an access panel? I'm not sure. Instrument panel there. You've got a compass on there as well. Um, that's all very nice. You've got the back of the instrument panel there. Not really sure what this is. It looks like a toilet seat, doesn't it? Um, not really sure what that is. And then we've uh, got that reel going in there with moulded on uh, rope by the look of it, which is a nice touch rather than trying to replicate it with all furry cables and stuff. Um, we've got an anchor there by the look of it. And then that's going to go down into there. We've got some bollards on the front for tying down into the docks. And you can see when you look through there, you can see the cable reel or the rope reel. We've got the tail wheel going on there. 
and then here we've got the undercarriage. If building undercarriage down, follow steps 33 to 38. If building undercarriage up, miss steps 33 to 38 and go straight to step 39. So here we go, undercarriage going in. We've got wheels, got weighted weight on tyres, which is nice. And they looking really, really nice indeed. Um, and this is showing it on the ground, undercarriage down. I believe that's what they're showing you there. And then here we have the engine going together. So this is the main nacelle. You've got some engine detail moulded in there by the look of it. And then we've got the... I'm not sure what that is in there. Is that the actual engine itself? I'm guessing it is. There's some engine detail in there and it doesn't really show without looking at the parts. We can't see what's in there. It looks like there might be some cylinders in there. I know the engine's on the outside, isn't it? I'm not really sure that. It's probably all sorts of bits and pieces of mechanism. Um, and they've got the engine halves coming together. We're fitting some fairings and stuff on there. So for version A, you're going to have that little one. And for version Bs and Cs, you're going to have that great big one. And then we've got the uh, struts going on, forward struts going on, and then that comb going on the engine to make it more aerodynamic. You can see it's got a three degree twist so, uh, to take out the natural um, uh, ro ro rotational torque of the propeller or whatever you call it. Then we've got supports going in for the tailplane, tailplane going in there, and then the rudders going on. And you've got a maximum of 27 degrees, 28 degrees up and down on the elevator, so you can position them should you want to. Let's check your references because it may be when they're parked they hang down. Never rely on aircraft in museums because they've often got brackets on them to stop them falling down. Um, and then here we've got wings out. We're going to cut a couple of slots in this part here, these two parts. Wings folded, we're going to cut a couple of slots in the forward edges of those two parts. So uh, you've got to make your mind up early on if you're going to drill the fuselage or not. So here's wings folded, here's wings out. It would actually look very nice with wings folded, wouldn't it? It would be very different and it would be very easy to display. Uh, so we've got our spars going here for the wings out. And here's the spar for the wings folded. And then we're building up our wings. And then we've got the main spar there for the wings out. So that's that there. And then we've got the spars here for the wings folded. Um, ailerons going on, you can have them up and down 16 degrees. We've got landing light going in there so you can paint the detail inside. We've got this inner part of the wing going on there so that's for wings out. You've got those two millimeter pegs that are going to plug into the fuselage. And then we have struts and stuff for the wings. And then we're going to add our, so we're adding our upper wing first and adding the lower wing after. That's unusual. Um, might want to incorporate your rigging with doing all this. Or at least drill and, and loop your and put your loops in or whatever now up to you um, and then adding the ailerons and flaps to the lower wings here we have our undercarriage up so if you want to build it in a flying position or floating on the water then there you're going to put your undercarriage up They're telling you to remove a pin there with a file you've got your floats going on the wings and then here we've got the engine that's got some lovely engine detail probably worth adding some wire and stuff to tart that up a bit because it is very exposed so you've got your intakes on there, very nicely done. You've got the exhaust coming out of the bottom there. I think that's exhaust. That is exhaust because they're not they wouldn't be facing forward, would they? Not sure. We'll see when we build it. And then we've got our push rods and that going in there. Got some bits and pieces here, blanks. Okay, so we've got rocket launchers and we've got bombs, so we can have that all blanked off if it's just a reconnaissance aircraft or rescue. And if we're going to go start fighting and hunting subs and stuff, then we'll have these depth charges and little bombs on there. We've got some rocket launchers there as well, by the look of it. Uh, we've got a gun, machine gun going on the front. It's probably a 303. And then we've got a... Um, what's this here? That's the shield. That's the shield for the gunner on the, uh, on the back. So you can have that down or up and then have the guns, pair of twin guns there. Uh, so have that up and have the gun so you can see down his side and that's going to be much nicer. You've got a propeller being assembled and then the propeller, ha the propeller has to go in a certain position if you've got folded wings it has to be north-south. And then we have our windscreen going in and we've got options here of having a complete windscreen closed as it would be in flight or we can have the all the canopy open so that upper part is slid back and I think I saw this side piece open as well which is a nice touch. That'll look lovely with all that open. So um, maybe it is worth getting a nice interior and doing it because it really does... Models like this, they've got lots and lots going on, all the wires and all the, the engine exposed and all the little guns sticking out. There's lots and lots to look at, so they really do capture the eye. 
Um, and then here we've got the folded wings option, what we've got to do to the wings to make them sit correctly in the folded position. And then we're going to fit the wings in their folded position. Again, we're doing the landing lights and everything, ailerons, flaps, just as before. Okay, and then we're going through blanks or adding rockets and bombs and stuff, and then floats again. So basically that's just repeating the same in the folded position. So there you can see the model built up, all rigged, folded and unfolded. So uh, very nice. And here you can see it folded with all these flaps open and everything. And here you can see it wings open with all the flaps and everything open, uh, closed up. So um, you can you know do whatever you want with that one. I'm not sure, it might be worth checking. I'm not sure if you could have the wings folded with that gun exposed. Because I'm not sure if those wings would encroach on where that goes. Worth checking before you uh, decide. So that's that. Right, so let's have a look at some plastic. This beautiful model. So like I said, I wish I'd got this. In fact, no, I'm glad I didn't get it on the first release, because if I did, it would have been the soft, the old blue tack plastic. This is far superior, this stuff. So it is lovely, this plastic. Right, so we'll put our screws up here, and we'll go one by one, and we'll get some lights on. I'm just going to do them as they come. I'm not going to do it in any particular order. So um, here we can see this is sprue A, he says. We've got lovely detail here on our um, on our fabric panels. Um, we've got yeah, we've got some sink marks in there, but it doesn't matter because they're fabric panels. It looks like they're flaps. Okay, I don't think they're ailerons. They look too thick. But we've got here we've got the fuselage sides and the um, bottom of the hull. We've actually got some raised rivet detail on the hull, which is very nice. It's all raised rivet detail. And on the sides, it's all recessed rivet detail. Well, there's some raised there. There's some raised rivet detail there, up around the canopy. There's nothing on the tail. There's some raised detail there, but it's, you can see when you look at it close up, it's very, very nice. It really is lovely. And we can see it's also quite oily. It's going to need a wash, this one, which is what Airfix always recommend anyway. And then we've got all the detail inside. Ejector pin heaven, you can have some fun with that. But check before you start doing them, because a lot of them may get covered up. And you might waste your time. And they also look as though they're slightly raised. So it's a bit of a trick, bit of sanding in there, and you should be able to sort them out. We've got the bottoms of the uh, floats by the look. That's the tops of the floats, isn't it, by the look of it? Because they've got the struts in there. So yeah, very, very nice indeed. Lovely detail, lovely detail in that hull base. Beautiful detail on the fuselage, as you can see there. Very, very nice. So here we have sprue D. Not that it matters, but we have here lots of greebly bits for the interior. We have that framing there for the seat, a little bit of flash on there. A little bit of flash going around here, but it doesn't matter. We're modelers after all. A bit of flash doesn't matter. Um, we've got some pretty heavy mould seaming on here. You can see some pretty heavy seams down in there. But again, it's all just a case of scraping and sanding. It's not a problem. Um, that detail that I thought might have been part of the engine looks like it's just pipe work or something inside there. We've got our engine cowlings there. Engine intakes. Uh, we've got the back of the engine there, front of the engine there, I'm guessing, or vice versa push rods there so I would I think it would really benefit from having some cables and stuff added some wires um, and a bit of a dry brush and we've got lots of interior detail here there's that reel I think that's the reel for the um, for the for the uh, rope which is there which is very nice we've got these reels in the back of the fuselage we've got parts of the floor here which is all beautifully ribbed and detailed and all the ejector marks are on the back which is nice we've got the seat there which has got a beautifully molded cushion We've got the seat there for the wireless operator or navigator, or whoever that is, sat back there. Instrument panel there with the compass, which is tiny. And there's the back of the instrument panel that you're going to see when you look through the front. And uh, yeah, it's lovely. The engine detail, the, the fin detail on there is really, really nice. You're going to have a seam to deal with in the middle, but a lot of it is hidden. So it's not going to be too much work to do. And I love the way they've got that rope molded on there. That's really cool. So yeah, very nice indeed. That was a sprue D. Here we have sprue... Which, which one's this? This is E. So we've got struts here for the wings. A little pitot tube in there. Be careful not to snap that off. Again, it looks like we've got some mould seams 
it's not too bad. It's just I thought, I thought it might have been mobbed with some misalignment, but it doesn't seem too bad. It's quite good. We've got bomb halves here, depth charges, racks there. We've got all our guns there, very finely done. You could replace the barrel should you want to. We've got some little bombs there as well. And then more struts here for that's undercarriage legs by the look of it, and that's undercarriage legs up, I'm guessing. There's that shield for the gunner. Tail wheel, more struts, and the wheels themselves, which have got some pretty hefty seat marks in them, unfortunately. So aftermarket wheels may be an option. We do have, they've gone to the trouble of giving us weighted tyres, and they're one piece, not in halves. There's no lettering on the tyres. But we have the weighted tyres, but obviously if the undercarriage is going to be up, they won't be weighted, so you've got the non-weighted as well. But I would seriously consider, yeah, we do have some mob this misalignment on here. I would seriously consider resin wheels because that looks bloody horrible. That great big sink mark in it. Um, it's because they've moulded, it's got great big sink marks in the back as well, but look at it. It's because they've moulded the wheels as one big thick section, and that mass of plastic, as it cools, it shrinks back. So, uh, yeah, there's a part there which has come from somewhere. Looks like it's broken off of something. So what we will do is put that there and grab it in a minute. So, uh, yeah, very nice indeed. It looks like that might have come. Yes, it's broken off that gun. So what I'm going to do, I am going to grab a piece of masking tape right here, right now, to make sure we don't lose it. And I'm going to tape that onto that sprue there okay and we'll fold that over back on itself and then we'll fold that over back on itself so that's our part held there so that part has been broken off that gun so there we are right so that was sprue e wasn't it so that's sprue e taken care of then we have here we have sprue which one is this Appear. I said this is B. Right, so we've got our wings here and they have beautiful texture on them. Really, really nice. They're in two halves, not like wing nut wings. Um, but yeah, really, really nice. We've got the, is that the tops of our floats there? We've got the spars there for the wings out and there's the spars there for the wings back. Um, we have our top of our nose there. There's the cover that goes in there if you want to cover it up. And then we've got the exposed wings, ends of the wings, if you have the wings folded. And you've got these parts here, five and six, which need bits and pieces cut out of them, depending which way you're going to go with your wings. You could have one wing folded and one wing out, I suppose. But the model might tip over, that's the trouble. But um, yeah, it's all very nice. It's all very crisp and clean. It's just a shame about that. That sprue is a bit of a, bit of a mess with the sink marks and the misalignment and the flash. Not the flash, the mould seams. So here we have the final sprue. This is sprue C. And here we have the top of the fuselage. We've got the gun port there. We've got ailerons here, which again are beautifully done in the fabric. We've got our tail plane there. Again, beautifully done in the fabric. That's one piece. There's no halves to glue together. We have all the interior detail on the roof there, which is nice. There's our rudder. Again, with the fabric and the trim tab on the back. We've got our floats there. And then we've got our, our wings funny little mark on that wing there just needs to be sanded out and there's our base for our rockets guns missiles bombs whatever and there's the blanking plates for them and that's the shroud around the tail wheel i think so yeah very very nice indeed other than that one spruey it's lovely right let's have a look at our clear parts see how clear they are or not let's hope we don't have any recurrences of the ants and experience. So, very nice clear parts indeed. That there is a bit dodgy. That's the one I want to use as well. Um, you can see we have windscreen here with one panel open and we have this one here which is all closed up. So it's all very very nice, very nice indeed. And what they've done here sensibly is that panel there, if you're having it closed up, you just mask off the windows and paint the whole thing rather than try and glue a window in. For the folded up one, you have the panels to glue in. But um, we do have a bit of spider webbing on that one, I think. It might be a scratch. But the landing light's also very nice and clear as well. And the, um, we can see here how lovely and clear the, 
exterior parts are, your cockpit's got a little lovely in there. So yeah, all in all, a very, very nice kit. I, I would have given it 10 out of 10. Um, but unfortunately that sprue E is kind of taken it away, so it's an 8 out of 10. Um, just seal that back up so they can't come out and get scratched. No, overall, what a lovely model. Really, really pleased with it. Glad I bought it. When I'll ever get around to building it, I don't know. But by the time, the trouble is, you think, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get around to it one day, and then you find Airfix have stopped making it, and you, you end up not being able to get one unless you want to spend £100. So, yeah, glad I got this. It was about £42, I think. Um, uh, well, am I confu I'm confused with the B24, which I've ordered. But um, I can't remember how much this was now. But, uh, yeah, really, really glad I got it. Beautiful model. Go get yourself one. It will look, if you, especially if you rig it, it will really look like it, it takes centre stage in, in amongst other 48 scale aircraft, I can assure you. It really is a beautiful aircraft, in my opinion. Thank you for watching. I will see you all soon for another review, build or whatever. Bye for now.